Income tax 2023-2024 business credits. Get ready and some coffee because contrary to popular belief, you need a strong imagination to do income tax preparation 2023-2024. Most of this information, first a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six pack shirts, a must have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. It comes from publication 334 tax guide for small business for individuals who use Schedule C tax year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. Noting that the sole proprietorship Schedule C rolls into line one income, which is a little funny considering the Schedule C itself is basically an income statement having business income minus business expenses otherwise known as business deductions resulting in in essence net business income that rolls into line one income of the income tax formula which is reflecting the calculation behind the form 1040 this being page one of the form 1040 schedule c rolling into line number eight additional income from schedule one this is the schedule one additional income and adjustments to income we have part number one schedule c rolling into line three business income or loss from the schedule c this is a schedule c profit or loss from business which has a profit and loss p l or income statement format income minus expenses all right let's look at the general business credits now noting that we are basically going to list out these credits because they are often going to be specific towards specific types of industry. So you want to be aware of them. And then as you're thinking about your business, if you're doing tax preparation or running a business, you want to say, do these credits apply to this particular business? And or are these kind of industries that I'm specialized in going to be subject to these types of credits? And if so, then you need to do more specialized research in those particular areas specializing within them. So your general business credit for uh, the year consists of your carry forward of business credits from prior years plus the total of your current year business credits. So credits, we note that they're good like deductions and that way credits are similar to deductions. Remembering that taxes are all kind of upside down and backwards. In other words, normally the income statement, we like income and we don't like expenses, but for taxes, we like the expenses because those are the deductions. The credits basically are going to give us a benefit similar to the deductions, but typically a larger benefit if you're talking about a dollar credit versus a dollar deduction, for example, the dollar credit is usually worth more because the dollar deduction will simply be lowering 
the taxable income, which will then have a tax rate applied on it, whereas the dollar credit might actually give us the full dollar of a benefit back. Now, if we can't get something like a deduction we've seen in the past or a credit in the current year because of a phase out or something like that, then the idea would be, can I carry it backwards? Meaning take it back to prior years where I can take it in those time frames, or possibly carry it forward into future years. Anytime we have more complex tax returns that involve credits or carry backs and carry forwards, I would recommend using the same tax software from year to year. And if picking up a new client or new tax software, entering the data from the prior tax year into the prior software year, and then performing it forward. So the carry forward uh, will be assisted with the use of the software. So in addition, your general business credit for the current year may be increased, but, uh, increased later by the carry back of business credits from later years. You subtract these credit directly from your tax. So useful items, form, and instructions. So to get more information on this stuff, you could go to the forms and instructions for 3800 general business credit which you can of course find on the irs website irs.gov irs.gov and formed and instruction 6251 alternative minimum tax individuals all right business credits all of the following credits are part of the general business credits the form you use to figure each credit is shown in parentheses so you will also have to complete form 3800 if any of these credits apply. Some credits have expiration dates. Uh, check the instructions for each credit to make sure it is available for 2023. So again, we'll basically list out the credits here, which might be specific towards specific industries oftentimes. And then if you think that credit is applicable to you, you want to drill down doing more research, possibly looking at the related forms and instructions and finding them on the IRS website, doing more uh, research from there. We've got the alternative fuel vehicle refueling property credit. That's form 8911. This credit applies to the cost of any qualified fuel vehicle refueling property. For more information, see form 8911. So if you're dealing with situations where you have large vehicles that need refueling, then you will most likely be dealing with that kind of information and will want to specialize in the tax consequences related to it. Biodiesel, renewable diesel, or sustainable uh, aviation fuel credit, form 8864. So same kind of idea. So if you're in certain types of industry, you might still need the diesel fuel, uh, which might be you know, just better for those types of vehicles for whatever reason. Although again, obviously you're dealing with like pollution legislation and so on that's gonna be critical about those types of things. So you end up with all these kind of specialty regulations when you're dealing in those industries. For more information, you could see form 8864. Biofuel producer credit, that's gonna be form 6478. So anytime we're dealing with any kind of fuel situation, you would imagine the IRS, because they're really hyper-focused on this environmental things these days, they're going to try to restrict possibly fuel use in general, which you're going to have to deal with those kind of uh, legislations and possibly look for alternative types of fuel usages, possibly incentivizing the use of different types of fuel. Therefore, if, you, if they can disincentivize diesel, for example, and maybe like a biofuel incentivize that, they might do that. Oftentimes, the legislation, sadly, lags behind the technology and, and, in my opinion, often acts as more of a hindrance towards achieving better environmental goals due to the clunkiness of the legislation. But that's, that's what we have to deal with. That's what's going to end up happening. So for more information there, you can see Form uh, 6478. So then we have the carbon oxide uh, sequestration credit Form 8933. So obviously, again, this kind of has to do with the idea of pollution because the greenhouse gases 
uh, carbon uh, carbon oxide, or I think is going to be dealing with that. So again, that'll be specific towards particular industries. This credit is for carbon oxide that is captured at a qualified facility and disposed of to secure geo geological storage or used in a qualified enhanced oil or natural gas recovery project. So one of the things they're trying to do with this carbon is possibly take it out of the air, recapturing it, storing it somewhere, putting it underground, or maybe they can shoot it into space at some point or something, or possibly using it uh, alternatively. So for more information, you could see Form 8933, credit for employer social security and Medicare taxes paid on certain employee tips. So that's going to be Form 8846. This is another area where I think the IRS has really kind of, uh, I, I think, kind of overstepped on the on certain business models that deal with tips. Because it used to be that if you had a restaurant or something like that, you can basically hire people almost as contractors to serve in the restaurants and make their money with tips. And and you wouldn't have, and you could say, hey, look, that's their business. They make tips. I make the food, and it is what it is. And but. Obviously, that's not what the government likes. They like a situation where the person receiving the tips has to report the tips as income, and it's hard to track the income because who are they going to 1099 if they're getting tips directly from customers who aren't writing those tips off as business expenses and therefore aren't required. So they want the tips to be governed by the employer, which, which kind of destroys that business model. So if you deal with tips... That's why notoriously tip-based businesses, clubs, and restaurants, the IRS, I don't think they like them very much, right? Right, but but you have to see, you have to do you have to do your whole dance uh, on, on, on compliance with regards to tips in those types of industries to get a business model that works and that is in compliance. So this credit is generally equal to your employer's portion of Social Security and Medicare taxes paid on tips received by employees on food and beverage establishments where tipping is customary. So the credit applies regardless of whether the food is consumed or uh, off your business premises, on or off your business premises. So for more information there, you can see Form 8846. Credit for employer differential wage payments. Form 8932. This credit provides businesses with an incentive to continue to pay wages to an employee performing services on active duty in the uniformed services of the United States for a period of more than 30 days. So obviously, if someone goes on to active duty, then you, they might not be able to keep their job and whatnot, but the, but the government is trying to have an incentive to have them keep the employment and we have that credit coming about. So for more information, you can see form 8932 for that. Credit for employer provided childcare facilities and services, form 8882. This credit applies to the qualified expenses you paid for employee childcare and qualified expenses you paid for childcare resource and referral services. So now you have the childcare, which of course the, what's the incentive behind that credit? You would think more, you know, women or two people in the workplace or possibly single family, uh, single parent homes, you know, being able to work where they need the child care. So the government's trying to give an incentive then for child care providing through basically credits. So for more information there, you've got the uh, for, uh, form 8882, credit for increasing research activities, form 6765. This credit is designed to encourage businesses to increase the amounts they spend on research and experimental activities, uh, including energy research. Now, this one, you know, obviously the idea of a business when it's long term in nature is that you can do the research and development, which often comes up with nothing. But if you hit if you hit something on the research and development, then you want to be able to make revenue in the future. The classic example of this is like drug companies, which are constantly getting beat up, sometimes for good reason, of course, pharmaceutical companies, for example. But the business model of the pharmaceutical country company is, of course, research and development, which is costly and often doesn't pay off. And, and when it does pay off, 
it has to pay off or else why would you do the research and development? And that's why the United States gets a lot of flack. A lot, a lot of uh, people complain about about the cost of the medicine, which I, I can understand and so on. But at the same time, obviously, the research and development needs to pay off or else no one's going to do it. So so you have this kind of kind of issue. That's an extreme case, though. Similar things happen with like uh, software development and stuff like that. If you develop the software and someone just steals it right after you develop it, you have no copyright laws or anything like that. China just steals it or something. Then that's going to really disincentivize research because the idea of getting the property is to have the property. That would be like like trying to get food uh, from farmers. But every time a farmer purchases a piece of property, someone just steals it and we have no property rights. We've eliminated property rights because they're evil for whatever reason. Well, that means no one's going to try to grow some avocados on their farm because people are just going to steal all the avocados right after they start growing them. And then you can't. What are you going to do? Right. So that I think that's the major incentive. But anyways, so you have incentives to try to get people to do research. So for more information there, you can see public you can see form six, seven, six, five. So you got the credit for small employer health insurance premiums, Form 8941. This credit applies to the cost of certain health care coverage you provide to certain employees. Now, this one, of course, is part of that situation where health care has often been tied to uh, corporations. So employees often get their health care through the employer. It used to be largely because the group plans were cheaper. And therefore, if you can get a group plan, the insurance companies would often be able to get a cheaper uh, plan. But then, of course, all these legislations have have happened related to health care. And so you've, you've got this situation of small businesses then saying, well, if I have a small business, how can I compete with these health care benefits and so on uh, so I can stay afloat on the small business? And so and so for more information there, you can see form eight, nine, four, one credit for small employer pension plan startup costs, auto uh, enrollment, and military spouse participation, Form 8881. So this credit applies to pension plan, startup costs of a new qualified defined benefit or defined contribution plan, including a Section 401k plan, simple plan, or SEP plan. So many small businesses, if you're a Schedule C type of business, once again, one of the benefits from an employer-employee situation is the setup of a 401k plan. And that's a big benefit because the tax law has has gotten into the system and basically said, well, if you put money into these 401k plans, then you don't have to pay taxes on it, which is a huge benefit. And that's really the benefit oftentimes that wealthy individuals are trying to increase the, the dollar amount of uh, because you get this huge deferral of taxes, which, you know, but obviously if you're a lower income individual, you don't have the cash flow to put into the plan, even if it was available to you. And if you're a small business, then you can't put money into the 401k plan in the same way. You might be able to use an IRA, but the IRA has much lower limits in terms of how much you can put into the IRA. And therefore you might want to start up your own small business 401k plan but the startup costs are in are high as well as the management costs. And so they have other plans, the simple plan and a set plan designed specifically for small businesses. And again, we have basically incentives for small businesses to try to get some of the tax benefits that are now being attributable to the large businesses with regards to uh, the 401k plans and whatnot. And, and you might say, hey, look, the, these benefits are being provided to the employees and not to the employer. But I just want to just point out that that's not exactly how it works. We're in an economy. So if the employer can provide money, compensation to the employee that goes further, that benefits both the employee and the employer, you know, because obviously if I can give my employee $10,000 and it's tax free, then 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 they're going to want to be able to work for me more than if I give them $10,000, but they have to pay 2000 of it to taxes in some uh, way, shape or form. So 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 you can you can then ask the question, well, who's really paying 
who's really benefiting? Well, both people are benefiting, both the employee and the employee. In any case, for more information, you can see publication 560, Retirement Plans for Small Business. All right, so then we have dis Disabled Access Credit, Form 8862. This credit is a non-refundable tax credit for an eligible small business that pays or incurs expenses to provide access to persons who have disabilities. So if you have like a, a place of employment and there's stairs or something there and you put a walkway in it so that you can have a wheelchair go up it or possibly instead of having stairs inside, you, you insert an elevator or something like that, then you might look into the disability access credit. So uh, you must pay or incur the expenses to enable your business to comply with the Americans with Disability Act of 1990. For more information, you can see Form 8862, or I'm sorry, 8826. I went dyslexic there. Distilled uh, Spirits Credit, Form 8906. This credit is available to distillers and importers of distilled spirits and eligible wholesalers of distilled spirits. I'm not sure exactly why the distilled spirits people uh, get a credit. I'm not totally up to date on exactly the rationale for that one. Seems kind of funny, but there it is. We need our distilled spirits, and they they obviously they often overtax the distilled uh, spirits on uh, the sales tax side of things and excise tax. So maybe I, they're, they're even. I don't know. But for more information, there you can see publication eight nine zero six. Form 8994, this credit applies for wages paid to qualified employees while they are on family and medical leave subject to certain conditions. So for more information, you can see Form 8994. Then you've got the Empowerment Zone Employment Credit, Form 8844. You may qualify for this credit if you have employees and are engaged in a business in an empowerment zone for which the credit is available. In other words, you have certain locations that have uh, lower income locations generally, and if you hire people that are located in those areas, then possibly there's a credit available there. It gets kind of complicated and messy because you have to verify that they live in that area and so and and all that kind of stuff. But there's that one. I've dealt with that one a little bit in my in the past. It's been there for a while now. So for more information, you can see Form 8844, Energy Efficient Home Credit. Okay, so now we've got the Form 8908. This credit is available for eligible contractors of certain homes sold for use as residents. So clearly that's going to be specific towards our particular industry. Once again, looking at these environmental types of laws, trying to have home builders build homes that are more energy efficient. Again, in my mind, like you might look at all these kind of these kind of laws and say, oh, aren't they virtuous that they're putting these laws in place? But it seems to me that energy efficiency, if we get good at it, should carry its own weight due to increased technology. So in other words, if people are able to buy and make more energy efficient homes, people will want more energy efficient homes because they use less energy and that's cheaper. Right. So so it seems to me the technology is the thing that's going to drive us there. And oftentimes these laws, although they look virtuous, are actually detrimental because the way they the way they put them in place is is they could actually block innovation. Right. And uh, anyways, I don't want. But for more information, you can see Form 8908 Investment Credit Form uh, 3468. The investment credit is the total of the uh, several credits. For more information there, you can see Form 3468. We've got the Low Sulfur Diesel Fuel Production Credit, Form 8896. Obviously, that's somewhat specialized for sulfur diesel fuel. So for more information, you can see that Form 8896. You've got the Low Income Housing Credit, Form 8586. This credit generally applies to each qualified low income building placed in service after 1986. So once again, we're talking about people make, you know, production of uh, buildings and whatnot and possible type of uh, incentives uh, for that. So for more information, you can see form 
8586. We've got the new markets credit form 8874. This credit is for qualified equity investments made in qualified community development entities. For more information, form 8874. Then you've got the orphan drug credit. So form 8820, this credit applies to qualified expenses incurred in testing certain drugs for rare diseases and conditions. So for more information, you've got form 8820. Once again, specialized kind of credit there. Now we've got the clean vehicle credit form 8936 back to the theme of uh, the environment. So these credits are for certain clean vehicles placed in service during the tax year. So again, to me, like the, the, on my, my thinking of this is we're gonna get clean energy through innovation, right? Not through the, the tax codes, probably not gonna, not gonna be the thing that pushes us over. It's the people like the actual Teslas out in the world that are making the car, not likely because of the tax breaks per, per, per se, but because there's demand you know, for it. And, and once the technology hits, then I think, it'll be marketable and that's what's going to take us there but in any case qualified reload truck maintenance uh e credit form 8900 this credit applies to qualified railroad truck maintenance uh, expenditures paid or incurred during the tax year so for more information there you got form 8900 you've got the renewable electricity production credit form 8835 this credit is for renewable energy sources. So once again, there's our theme again, renewable energy sources. Often a confusing term again, because I, I don't think a lot of people really understand what it means to be, you know, renewable and, you know, the kind of difference between creating energy that can be used and storing that energy and so on and the, the complications in those processes. But uh, this credit is for renewable energy sources uh, produced in the United States or U.S. territories from qualified energy resources at a qualified facility. So a lot of qualifications in this credit. So for more information, though, you can see Form 8835. You've got the Work Opportunity Credit, Form 5884. This credit provides businesses with an incentive to hire individuals from targeted groups that have a particularly high unemployment rate or other special employment needs. So again, the idea here, incentivizing people to hire from groups they might not otherwise hire from, possibly because they have a, a, they're from a certain location, which is a low income possibly, or possibly because they have records like hiring uh, criminals or something like that, po could be some of the incentives that are at play there. But in any case, for, for more information, you could see Form 8554.